Hey everyone, thanks for joining. I'm Liz, co-founder of Outlier Automation, a control systems integrator. Today, we're gonna to talk about Siemens style guides in TIA Portal. We'll start by looking at why PLC programming styles matter and how style guides can help. And then we'll go through an example of how to use it. Let's start by gaining a practical understanding of why programming style matters. Here's an example of poor style choices. First, we see inconsistent block naming, which makes the project tree more difficult to read. Also, the name MysteryDB gives us no indication of whether the data block is global or instance memory. Second, we see that the bmode tag has no comment, so we don't know if the normally closed contact represents auto mode, manual mode, or something completely different. Third, these tags are all directly linked to I.O., but they all use different naming conventions. If all of the I.O. tags shared a common prefix, it would be immediately clear where the tag comes from just by reading its name. When we're making decisions about programming styles at Outlier, we like to refer to this cheat sheet that Siemens released with their own style guides detailing best practices to optimize readability, performance, and memory usage. If you don't have your own programming styles already, check these out for a great starting point. There will be a link to the document in the description of this video. When it comes to best practices, here are some of the tips that we've come up with over the years. Choose one naming convention and stick with it. There are many options, but consistency is the key to doing style right. Communicate style requirements to all developers so that everyone is on the same page and make sure you maintain a document with requirements that can be quickly and easily referenced. Carefully consider the use cases of any and all of your rules. Conforming to a style does create overhead for programmers, but the benefit should outweigh the inconvenience. Make sure you have a demonstrated reason to add rules. And finally, to combat the overhead that comes with enforcing programming styles, use an automated tool to lighten the load. So what are the style guides in Portal? They're Siemens' integrated tool to automate the enforcement of programming conventions. The tool has access to metadata for code blocks, data blocks, UDTs, and tags, so it can check rules like the length of an object's name, the existence or content of comments, prefixes and suffixes, upper or lower casing, and quite a bit more. Siemens has released their own best practices rule set which you can import directly into your project. You can download the rule set using the link in the video description. Combining Siemens style guides with a robust standard can bring some big advantages to your workflow. Style guides make it much easier to enforce standards. You can export and send your rule set to OEMs, contractors, or your internal team. Second, you can train engineers faster because the consistent rules make ramp up a lot simpler. And third, you'll find yourself spending less time in code review because you can check the syntax of a whole project with the click of a button. The best part about Siemens style guides is that they're easily integrated into TIA Portal. Check the video description for a link to our first video on Siemens Test Suite, where we describe and show where to find the required downloads. Now I'll pass it off to Nick to show us a demo. All right, let's get into this demo. To start, I've got to open the same program that we looked at before. Let's go to Test Suite and then Style Guide to add a new rule set. So let's set up our first rule to catch this super long FB name. So we'll call it Block Name Length. Then we have our Type and Object Selector. Under the Object Selector, you can see all the different types of objects that we can make rules about. Kind of like Liz was mentioning earlier, we have the instance data blocks, data types, tags, constants. Uh, for this rule, we'll just use the code block. Then for type, we'll choose name length. So when we expand this caret, that'll show us all the attributes of this rule. So if the name is greater than 24 characters, we should get an error. And there it is. So let's attack casing next. We have this FB casing is important. 
We'll call this rule camel case blocks. Uh, code blocks are already selected, but for the type, we'll put casing. Drop down the caret. Camel casing is not set, will be a violation. And we'll disable our first rule. Right, so now we can see that OB main has a conflict and then FB casing is important. But actually, I don't want to enforce this for main. So let me just make this a warning here in the category. I can set it to error or warning. If we run it again, we'll see the violation still comes up, but it reports it as a warning instead. Another convention that could clean up this tree is if we introduce prefixes on the FBs. So let's make another rule called block prefix. Uh, it'll be for code blocks, but we'll choose for the type prefix suffix. Then if I drop down the caret, starts with not equal to, and I want, to, I want them to start with FB. Now I know that main's gonna break this rule too, so I'll just set it as a warning again. Let's see. Okay, yeah, so like I thought, main shows up, and then that prefix is a nice block. <laughs> okay, now, another thing that Liz pointed out is that our tags don't all have comments. So let's go to the tag table. We see B mode does not have a comment. So we'll make a new rule and call it tag comments. Uh, this time we're gonna point it at tags. So we'll use the object selector. Here we go. Then for the type, we'll choose metadata, which is kind of like a catch-all for a bunch of data about the tags. Uh, so for the specific property, you can see there's these different entries. We're gonna use comment and make sure that comment exists. So the violation condition would be not exists. Let's run that. There it is. Now for this last one, let's go back to the tag table. Let's say for whatever reason, we wanna put the prefix IO underscore on these tags. So let's make another rule called IO prefix. And this will be similar to the block prefix but we'll use the object selector again to point to the tags. The type will be prefix suffix. And we just wanna make sure that we start with, and let's just say a capital IO with an underscore. Yep, so we can see these three tags didn't have the prefix, but IO process running did. Okay, so to put it all back together then, close this. I'll enable all the rules and let's run them all at the same time. So we can see here's the results. It's this huge printout, but actually I can disable the info messages by clicking right there and the warnings too. So now we're just looking at errors. If I double click right here, it actually takes me straight to the issue. So I can add my comment in. Then if I go back to my rule set and run it again, we see there are no errors related to the tag comment rule. And we pretty much follow the same process to fix the rest of these errors. So this is definitely an interesting tool for project leads uh, and project managers to make sure that all the developers on the project are following the right standards. And then it's pretty useful for the developers too, because they can run the script so quickly and then just double click on the error or hit that go to arrow to take them straight to the violation. And that's all for today. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, send us a message at info at outlierautomation.com. And you can check out the other resources on the blog section of our website.